Can I quickly just hit on um, something that is, that is happening on Tobacco Road um, that I think we should point out uh, as pure journalists here? I think Duke made a big mistake. Um, I think Duke hired the wrong guy. I, I don't know if you've ever seen the the Dewey Cox story where where his father is like the wrong son died. I think that is going to be <laughs> Coach K. Um, that is going to be Mr. K very soon because North Carolina, in case you missed it, they went up to Purdue. They play. Uh, the Capel brothers, who are literally, you know, just it, it was like playing. Oh, they went up to pit. They went up to pit. pit. Yeah, to play the Capel yeah, brothers. Yeah, yeah. They, they lose this game. Uh, they were up the entire game, but then as as things play out, just you know, North Carolina collapses. Basically, Pitt wins. Uh, Capel wins another one against Hubert Davis. You get all of the the Duke people are chirping and things like that. But the way that Jeff Capel and Jason Capel uh, worked the officials in this game. Is something that was straight out of the Coach K playbook. You know what I mean? Like I've never seen anything like it. I wish I could have seen some BTS of like the the cash <laughs> envelope that they gave the officials before the game. All of these things. And then I watch Duke play against Wake Forest on the road, and I see John Shire not even standing up and coaching, just sitting on the bench, just being a, you know a fly on the wall is probably the nicest way to describe it. And then meanwhile, you see Jeff Capel, you know, trying to threaten the officials, uh, you know, <laughs> slapping, slapping the table, the media table as hard as he can, throwing pins at p people in the crowd. Um, and you say to yourself, I mean, this is, if this, if this was at Duke, which is AKA Nike University, if Jeff Capel was running Nike University, I would be actually terrified because you get the intimidation factor of a coach on the sideline with that talent. And oh my God, I mean, that is scary. I, I would actually be, very, very concerned about the future. And he seems to have Hubert Davis's number. Jeff Capel's calling out our defensive schemes that he learned when he played at North Carolina. He's a freaking spy, always has been. <laughs> hey, Joe Forte, leave early because he's a bad teammate. We all know this. Um, so to watch Whoa, that, whoa, whoa, whoa. So you're you're this is this is friendly fire now. You're you're going after There is no friendly fire. There, there, there is no friend. There has only been a foe that has been that we let him in. Is he a fake Tar Heel? the fake heel we all know this everyone whoa knows. every heel knows. turn it's a heel turn <laughs> every go look up articles back in the day about jeff capel or jason capel and the way that he treated joseph forte basically wow forte, you know what i mean joseph forte wanted to come back was Who's, okay okay not, 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 not to derail your rant but like i need the power rankings of uh uh carolina the the, the ostracized the uh, uh, the guys that have been cut out of the Carolina community is McCants one. Mac Jai. Every time I mention Mac Jai, you you shudder a little bit. So I, I he Look, he's got to be up there, right? The, re the reason that Mac is in there, first of all, Mac is still part of the family. But Mac had two moments in time that you'll never be forgiven for. One, he told MJ to his face that Akeem Olajuwon was the goat. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but in North Carolina. You're done. You're dead to us. We hate you forever. Also, you didn't win anything. So, you know, there's a certain level of like, what a waste of time for you to come here and then lose for us. And uh, and then the other time, there was a story that like he was trying to get in a party uh, that like during the NBA finals at one point and MJ was up on the balcony and uh, Maktar was like, let us in, you know, da, da, da. And Jordan like basically ignored him. It was like, I'm not letting you in. So he just he tried to use his Carolina privilege too far. That's the reason why, you know, Maktar is in the conversation. But yeah, McCants, I still love McCants, even though all of the, the, the things he said, it was all for attention. We all understood that. He also dated a Kardashian and went crazy. People forget this. But That's McCain, true. Yeah, blame it. He on was one of the early Kardashian <laughs> curses that people don't talk about enough. Um, so I give McCants a pass, even though he's still on that list. But Jason Capel might be number one. I mean, just the 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 way he behaves. He called our team soft last year. I mean, he goes in the media after the game, says, like, I know all their defensive schemes. It's like, yeah, dude, you played at Carolina. Shut up. Like, that's not a brother. That's not a family member. <laughs> You're a spy. Your brother is a bag man. We all know that. But I'm telling you, if I was Duke, if I was a, a, a real Iron Duke, Actually, never mind. The Iron Dukes don't want to, to be a part of the bag. Let, let's talk about if you're just like a casual Walmart Duke fan, Jason Cape, Jeff Capel was the man with his brother Jason Capel on the sideline to get in the head of Carolina fans. That was the move. And I watched that game, uh, you know, and, and I said to myself, if this combination had come to fruition, if Coach K let the bag really happen, I would be very worried, Titus, but um, luckily he's at Pitt, and Pitt's a quad one team, so it's not even a bad loss. People forget this. Pitt is quad one, and they're three and zero in the ACC. So I wasn't going to bring up. I wasn't going to bring up to Pitt. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up that you guys lost to Pitt because I I thought I was going to. That was no, my Christmas no. gift to you. I was just going to let it 
fly under the radar. All the all the shit that's happened between last show and now. That I just thought maybe we Look, could. Uh... It's the holidays. A lot of weird stuff happened. But a noon game, Mark Titus, a noon <laughs> game at Pitt with Coach K, Mister K's son-in-law on the call, Chris Patola. I mean, <laughs> get out of here! Like who who is who is scheduling this? Who <laughs> let this happen? Like th- this was, is the biggest. This was the Roy at the game, game? By the way, I didn't watch it. Was Roy at the game? Roy was at a Patriot League game for God knows what reason, but he was watching another basketball game. He was not at the game. Um, <laughs> That's smart, Roy. Roy, I, I don't, I, I hate to, to report this to you, but uh, I, I, I think you should know this that there are rumblings. Um, I, I don't know if I don't know if the friends of the program are saying this to you, but they are. Uh, we're, we're talking behind your back, Tate. That uh, there's some rumblings that people are starting to to put together the narrative that Roy is the new sister Jean. No. <clears throat> That's I what people are saying. I, I like. I lost my voice. <laughs> that's that's gross. That's, that's gross. Roy, Roy saying... is a basketball fan. He misses the game. <laughs> the game passed him by. He just wants to keep watching it. We respect him. We love him. That that's all it is. But I will say this. <laughs> during the broadcast, uh, Mr. K's son-in-law at one point is talking about, and I this happened, Titus. I don't know if you saw this during the broadcast. He's talking about Puff Johnson, right? Puff Johnson on the team, son or uh, brother of Cam Johnson. His nickname is Puff because he liked Cocoa Puffs. His real name is Donovan Johnson. So they tell a story. They're like, his mom wants him to be called Donovan, but everyone calls him Puff because he liked Cocoa Puffs, yada, yada, yada. Spatola, Mr. K's son-in-law, says, Cocoa Puffs suck. That's what he says. He's like, he's like Cocoa Puffs suck. So you're talking about a, a kid who's nicknamed <laughs> he liked Cocoa Puffs. He's like, Cocoa Puffs are trash. Like, everyone knows that. And I'm like, what is, what is this guy even talking about? And he goes, everyone likes Fruity Pebbles. And then luckily, whoever he's calling the game with was like, so should we call you Fruity? And he's like, I think I've been called that before. And I'm like, so from now on, if you have Fruity Spatola on the call. I did not see that. That's, I did not see that. That's amazing. It, it's Fruity Spatola away from Carolina games. And the funniest part, oh, in my red, the funniest part about all this is that North Carolina's next game is at home against Wake Forest. And I say to myself, well, hopefully Fruity Spatola isn't calling the game. Luckily, he's not, Mark Titus. But guess who is? And I, this is not even a joke. They were like, you know what, ESPN's like, you know what, uh, Coach K's uh, son-in-law, maybe a bridge too far for Carolina fans. They don't want to hear him. We'll we'll help you guys out. On the next call, we're going to have Corey Alexander, which, I mean, come on, and Randolph Childress. So Randolph Childress, the man who famously said, get up off the ground after crossing up a North Carolina player, is now going to call the Wake Forest North Carolina game. I'm sure in a very unbiased, objective fashion. I'm sure that'll be fun to listen to for all the fans at home. Who is scheduling this? Who who hates Carolina at ESPN? Because get this man out of my face. That's all I know. I don't know who's making these decisions, but literally get this man so far out of my face. Um, end of rant. Fruity Spatola. Conspiracy corner with Tate is my favorite uh, segment we do. Oh my on god! The show. It's, so never, it's never planned. It just kind of happens, and then I, Tate goes. I, <laughs> Tate goes I, crazy. I've just been waiting to get that off my chest because I'm watching this game and I'm like, is anyone else seeing this? Am I the crazy one? Am I the bad guy here? Uh, maybe I am, but goodness gracious, Mark Titus, have one. To someone talk from the pit vantage point the entire game, it'll drive it'll drive a man insane, especially if he's related to Mr. K. In Rand. the one uh, was the offensive foul that was the worst uh, the, on on Leaky Black, I think. Right, it was the worst church charge call I've ever seen in my life. Um, right, that was so. Well, that I, goes I, back I, to the bad guy part of this, where it's like I understand what the cables are doing. They're old school. They're like they meet the officials in the parking lot with an envelope of envelope. Of <laughs> I know how this works. <laughs> I get it. It's home court. We get it. We we see it. We respect it. I understand it. But at the same time, my God, how how in the how in my face does that have to be? For me not to lose my mind. I'm but done. Were they, but were the officials bad both ways? Is my question. No, they were not. They were bad. They were very bad. Both ways. <laughs> you can put me on the record for that. They were bad one way. Oh my God. Um. <laughs> I'm like sick as I'm yelling about this too. It's great. I, I, it's silver lining though. To explain to the people what's going on with uh, North Carolina basketball recruiting because I see our, our friend Joe Tipton, yeah, um, just just pumping out Carolina content lately. Is this next year? Is this two years away? Like what's going on? Carolina keeps landing recruits. Carolina has the number one class so far in 2024. We are so that's not this year, but next not year. The, not this year, but next year. Okay. All right. right. So we're building we're building a roster for the future. Um who has the Kentucky has a class next year, right? Kentucky's the I one that so. has the yeah. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, that's, that's good. Cal's North Carolina doesn't win many recruiting wars these days. So 
It's nice. This new kid that just committed, he's a you know four star, plays the five. His name is James Brown. Great name. We love that. Uh, Elliot Cadeau is the the top point guard in the class, five star. He just committed to North Carolina. He's Swedish. Plays for the Swedish national team. So, oh really? Yeah. So we got some. Wow. Got some good characters. And, I, yeah, that's why you texted like me. A legit point guard. Like he looks like uh, you he's texted me. The Raymond Felton and some of those other, you know guards I got back in the day. Swedish chef is what you said, right? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to Or the Swedish call. fish. You know what I mean? We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how slippery he is when he, he needs gets to do the do the do the do the Sam Cassell celebration when he hits big shots and Swedish meatballs. Right, that would be great. Mm-hmm. What? Well, there's lots of options. I'm excited <laughs> for the future, but also in the present time, please get Coach K's son-in-law out of my face. Hey there, thanks for watching Titus and Tate. For the full friend of the program experience, subscribe right below and come join us for all things college basketball. The action is heating up. Come join Titus and Tate.